Now it's recording. Hi, this is Catherine at Lollipop Acres. And I'm here with my English Angora rabbit. This is Miss Lavinia. And I've only had her for just a short period of time. And I'm going to give a try to grooming her the way a friend of mine showed me so that I can harvest some of this Angora that I can then blend with some of my fibers. But before I start doing that, I suppose I should tell you what I have in my bunny bucket, which is for all of the grooming supplies. First, I have bunny toys on the bottom so that I can show her and give her something to play with. Then I also have a couple of different brushes um, that I will use. These are just simple dog brushes with really thin tines. This one is okay, but this is the one I like the best right here because if I push on this little button, if you can see, it kind of releases the fibers off the tines and I can just pull the fibers right out. So that's a really cool one. Then I also have a little box of sunflower seeds because this is her treat so that she can have these when she's been a good girl. Let's see if she wants one right now. Here, Miss Lavinia. Here. Want one? Oh, yep. She likes those. I have a couple of small dog grooming combs. This one is a finer tine in it. I think that one's going to work a little bit better. Then I have some fiber that I've already gotten off of her, but I didn't do it the right way. I have nail clipping scissors, so if I have to trim her toenails. I have blunt and scissors. Can you see that? It's not sharp. So that if I do come across any type of, um, what do you want to call it? Mat. Then I can cut it out if I can't get it out with the brush. So I have that. I have a box lined with tissue paper that I'm going to store her fiber in until I get about four ounces that I could then blend with other fiber. And then for myself, I have my Diet Coke. Okay, so what I understood in combing a rabbit was that you just took your brush and you would raise her fur up and you would start combing. But apparently that's not quite exactly right. You do what you call plucking. Now that sounds like it's really a nasty thing to do to pl pluck someone's hair out. But this, I guess once you see what I'm doing, isn't really plucking. It's kind of like brushing your cat and getting the loose fibers out. So um, it's not harmful to the animal. You start brushing, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to comb and put my finger next to the tines and then just pull up. And what that does is it releases some of the fibers that she has. Let me see if I can get some. And see, she's obviously not too affected by this because she's going for the treats. So I'm going to back up, back up, back up. Okay. That's right. And so see, the, the fibers are coming out. And again, she's not obviously hurt by this. It's just going to start pulling these fibers out just like it would out of, off of my cat. Why they call it plucking, I have no clue because it makes it sound to someone like it's really going to hurt the animal, but it's not. And what I understand is once you start doing this, it starts to release more and more of the fibers they understand or somehow God created it so that they can start yeah see now I'm getting quite a lot of fibers and I'll just take that gently off and lay these fibers down so I can keep them all going in one direction in my box oh the other thing I should talk about a little bit is my table let me move this a little bit so you can see the table that she's sitting on I got this simple little folding table um, at uh, Walmart, actually. Here, Lavinia, here. Okay. And then what I did is I went to Home Depot and I got some indoor-outdoor rug and I cut it to fit the table 
and then I double sided taped it down so that she has something that she can put her little paws on so that she's not scared and that will hold her feet so she's not sliding. So here I'm going to continue with this method of plucking though not plucking and it just releases all these fibers out they come now mind you this is the only first time that I've actually done it this way because the breeder that I got her from explained to me that this is what I should be doing come on you're okay boop, boop. and she's really very good she just kind of holds still for the whole process even when I was doing it the other way and out comes and then one of the reasons you do this is so that she keeps producing so that you constantly get more fiber and the one thing that I found out totally by accident that nobody explained to me is that when you're brushing an angora rabbit you end up looking like the angora rabbit because this fiber that I'm getting off of her sticks to everything so I've actually ordered just a few minutes ago before I started doing this went on Amazon and I ordered myself a an apron that I can use when I'm combing her so that I don't get totally my clothes don't get totally covered with bunny fur now I realize I'm making a whole lot of faces while I'm doing this but I tend to be a very facial expressionist person so she's doing quite well actually and she's not full of mats because I have been actually brushing her on a regular basis I just haven't been doing this plucking stuff so we're getting quite a lot of fiber that I would just then put on my drum carter with some merino or maybe some BFL which is blue face luster which is a type of sheep or I can put this with my cormo when I shear my cormos yes <clears throat> move in a little closer here and give her a treat because she is doing such a good job here 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 what up here the buddy there you go. Doesn't want one. So I hope this just gives you a beginning idea of how to brush your Angora. And I'm sure I'll do a follow-up on this um, and let you know how it all went. But for now, that's the first lesson in brushing your Angora rabbit. Here, turn around. Oh, one of the reasons I like these English Angoras is seriously, when I was looking at Angora the rabbits and I pulled up one of these guys on the internet, I started to laugh my head off because, get in there. When you look at them, look at that. You can't tell what end you're looking at. Here's the ears. And they're so cute. And I have a satin Angora but they're, they have a little bit different fiber, kind of shiny. Seems shorter right now, but she's just a baby, so we'll have to see what happens. And um, she's white. And I'm actually, right now, looking at Miss Lavinia's sister. I'm possibly going to get her from my friend Marie. And Lavinia's sister is black with white. Actually, before we close, I think what I want to do is show you, and I'm getting this all over my nose and my hands. Oh my gosh. Get off. If I can bring her over to the camera so you can see inside her fur here, or her coat, just how beautiful this is. Here. Okay, come on. 
Let's show everybody how nice your hair is. Okay, look inside there. Isn't that beautiful? Can you see? I don't know if you can see it really well, but she's gray and white, and she kind of has little stripes of color inside. And I'm thinking that when I put this with other fiber, other sheep wool, and dye it, that those will add as really beautiful accents once they're dyed in there with the other wool. And then we'll be able to spin that. Get this on here. Oof, there it goes. And have some really lovely fibers for some hand spun yarns. So I'm going to continue this. And I will give you a report later on in another video how this came out. Thanks for joining. We'll see you later. Bye. That's a good girl. Okay. Let's get the video process. Hitting the button.